and talk to you uh, just a little bit about some work in progress on some analysis tools we're developing for studying manuscripts. And these are uh, just a, a couple of projects uh, underway that are part of a, a larger umbrella project on digitally enabled scholarship with medieval manuscripts that's being led by Meg Bellinger and, uh, and Barbara Shaler. And the two main uh, aspects we're working on these days is analyzing uh, the visual layout of the pages in medieval manuscripts and uh, looking at some of the material properties of pages in, uh, in manuscripts, in particular uh, the reflectance of the material uh, that, uh, that the manuscripts is, is made of. So for, for document layout, there's, uh, in, in the collections of manuscripts we're looking at, in particular a set of manuscripts that we're looking at with uh, Jessica Brantley. She's interested in books of, of ours. Um, there's, there's a wide variety of ways that uh, things are laid out on the page. We have some things that are, are, are all text. There are text with marginal notes uh, that are, are, are text uh, combined with illustrations either around the border or in, in the middle of the text. And then, of course, there are some pages that are, are purely illustration. And what we want to do is, in, in, in her case, she's looking at these books of ours. Um, the, the text content of, of different books of ours is largely the same. That's the point. They're, they're standard prayers, and that, that's the purpose of making these books. What's interesting is to pull out the things that, are, that vary in the various uh, manuscripts. And so uh, what we'd like to do is, of the thousands and thousands of pages of, of, of different books of ours, be able to do things like uh, pull out, uh, say, particular words. Or in, in the case, uh, say, in the center here, you see some um, sort of uh, blue and brown bars. Those are a, a layout indicating that this section is verse. Uh, and, and so we'd like to be able to pull out all of the pages of, say, verse. Or uh, things that, uh, that maybe Jessica's not interested in her uh, study, but in uh, future studies, people may be interested in seeing, like, well, uh, how are, you know, what is the variety of how leaves are represented? It's how are, how are faces represented? We'd like to do some analysis of the layout of the pages that can uh, be of use in, in Jessica's study and also uh, do a lot of processing that can be uh, speed up future studies of the manuscripts. Ah, I'm going backwards. Okay. So, uh, so what, the, the, what we want to do is be, uh, be able to analyze what's in these pages. And, uh, the, yeah, and the idea is a basic uh, technique from computer science. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, the term we actually use, divide and conquer. And so the first thing we want to do in analyzing the layout is identify this is text, this is not text. Because if you're going to look for a specific word, there's no point in looking for a word in, in the middle of a picture. You want to just, if you're going to look for a word, you want to look in the pages that are text. And the same way, if you're going to look for these boxes that indicate verse, there's no point in looking at them in a page that's only text. So our first step in analyzing these, uh, these pages is to uh, distinguish between text, not text. And for printed books, this is, this is a done deal. It's not a problem. That's the nature of print being very regular. But it's a problem in, in, in the variety of pages we see in manuscripts. And to identify um, text, not text, the first thing we need to do is identify the height of the text. And you know, because typically there are a lot of algorithms out there for analyzing pages. And step one is to go in and uh, give the algorithm the, the, the typical height of text on the page or in the book, and then the algorithm goes on. But since we want to study massive collections, we don't want to have people having to go in and enter, oh, this is how high the text is here, this is how high the text is here. So not to, um, to bore you uh, to, to a large extent, but just to, to give you a, an idea of why is this computer science uh, research, what we want to do is find a way that's robust for estimating uh, the height of the text that works without us having looked at the page, no one looking at the page, no one making any estimates. And this is just one, uh, one uh, diagram showing, giving sort of the gist of the technique, which is to uh, look at the page, 
look at sections of the page, look at subsections of the page. And what we do uh, every time we subdivide the page is we compute correlation coefficients. How, how, how much is one, one point uh, in, in the page like another point? And these horizontal lines indicate you know, directions where things are staying the same, whereas when they, when they go from, from uh, white to black, things are varying. So we can see where there's a, a, a picture. We don't see any nice, neat patterns. But when we have text, we see this very regularly periodic pattern. And we can compute from that, from the size of the periods, what the text height is. Now, obviously not, you know, we, since it's not all text, that's why we do this break it down, break it down. So when we have mainly picture, we get no period. Uh, we get uh, something, a, 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 a periodicity that's a little bit interrupted when there's a bit of illustration in with the text. And we get a nice clean signal when we have all text. So we go through all the pages and, and perform this analysis and get an estimate of text height for each piece at each level. And then by combining those estimates for each page, ultimately getting an estimate for each page for the text that's on that page, what is the typical height? So it's more uh, you know, blatantly obvious in this uh, text, uh, in this printed edition that we get thir 36 pixels indicated by that little red box. So we, uh, we took this algorithm and ran it on about uh, 7,000 manuscript pages. And here are some typical results of uh, various kinds of pages that have different combinations of text and, and image. And one question you say, well, great, you ran it on 7,000 pages. How do you know you get the right answer? That, that's a difficult question also. Um, First of all, we took uh, uh, 100 pages at random and went through and actually measured how high the text were on the page and compared that to the estimate we got. We got generally with well within 15% of what you would measure manually. And what's significant is if you go across a, an individual page and look at the text height variation, often you see it's a 15% variation. So that's really as good as we can expect to get. We also, for all 7,000 pages, uh, went through and, and plotted little boxes of the size that we estimated text height on each page so that you could go through and visually inspect, is that little box the same height as the text line? And overall, out of the 7,000 pages, we had about a 99% success rate. And so, well, uh, but I mean, these pages look pretty, you know, they don't look that hard. Why is this a, a big deal? Well, we have, uh, you know, we, these are sight unseen. We have a lot of really damaged uh, manuscripts where there's big splotches to confuse things. Uh, we have manuscripts that are, are faded, and so we don't have whole letters, but still, we're, we're getting the right answers. Um, generally, people are fairly careful about their digitizing, but, um, uh, but you know, laying a book flat can be difficult, so the, we also get some skewing. We still get the right answer. And the advantage of doing this break up the page, break up the page, break up the page is we can get a good estimate even when the page isn't full of text. Or when uh, it's, it, it's, it's mainly full of other things, we can still get some, uh, some good results. There are uh, some damage and also there's the problem of bleeding through, but uh, that, that signal is fainter than the, than the signal that we're looking at. So we were quite, quite pleased that we now had this automatic uh, method. There are cases that are failures, but, but we know why they're failures. These are so-called calendar pages, and we don't have continuous breaks between the lines on this calendar page. That there, are, there are vertical sets of characters that, that run together. So even when it fails, it's, it's telling you something about those pages. We got some um, rather ab absurdly uh, large text height, and that actually can be perhaps a, a way of, hey, pick out all of the, uh, the calendar pages. So uh, I have a, it's out of order. So, so now we've, this is the first step in our divide and conquer, that we can, we can identify text height. By using, using that, in the course of doing that, we were also able to immediately separate out of any, any manuscript pages that have no text. 
And then the next thing we can do is identify lines of text for the purposes, say, of associating uh, transcriptions, because now we know the size window to look at, to examine is this text, how, how far does this text extend. And we can also then uh, identify various uh, uh, um, uh, uh, elements of illustration and pull those out, for example, to identify the verse or to identify the way various letters are made. So a layout is one thing, and even though we, we you know, say in, in Vogue we're not going to be interested in, in identifying text and, and, and images because uh, it, it is print, the same principle of, you know, finding techniques to look at different layouts could be applied to start pulling out more details of the visual form. So it's not completely unrelated to the, to the previous work. The other uh, aspect of, the, um, of analyzing the manuscripts is looking at not just what do they say, what do they look like, but material aspects of, of the work to better understand who made these, how, how did they make them. And by doing um, multi-spectral imaging rather than standard camera imaging, we can get a, a plot of the reflectance at, at different wavelengths at a re relatively crude scale, but at a scale that starts letting us differentiate between the, the, the different materials on the page. It may not let us identify those materials, but we can perhaps say how many materials uh, were used on this page, uh, does the spectrum of the materials vary as we go through the manuscript, and all these things can be clues to how was the manuscript produced, who produced it. Just to give you uh, uh, a little bit of uh, introduction about multispectral capture, it's been around a long time, but suddenly it's become a very hot topic in, in, the, in the cultural heritage arena. Uh, instead of having uh, se sensors in the camera that are, 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 are matching human visual response, they have sharp bands in the, in, in, in the visible spectrum that, so you can identify where in the visible spectrum light came from. We also can measure the, the near UV and the IR, things that you can't see that further help us analyze what's on the page, how was it made. Uh, it's high dynamic range, which means that you have less burnout and less too dark area, areas that are too dark. And we can actually, uh, using this, estimate the physical property of reflectance rather than color. And when I, it, it, it's, it's a significant difference. Uh, spectral reflectance is a physical property. Color is in your head. It's, uh, it's only as meaningful to people. Uh, so we're, we're dealing with the fact that, that light itself is composed of uh, light of different wavelengths. And if we look at the different materials that are used in, 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 in manuscripts, they could have rather similar spectra that appear to have the same color, but that you can differentiate if you see the spectra. Uh, just to give you an idea of this, we, see, we, we form the idea of color because of how light reflects at us. And if there's a certain spectrum of light, it reflects into our eye and we get this idea of color. But the problem is with cameras that are tuned to, to produce our sense of color, rad radically different spectra can give us the same idea of color. So we can't discriminate be between things on the page the well as, as well as if we record the spectrum. Just another example of radically different spectra that look like the same color. So, so instead of using a standard camera that gives you RGB values, we use a, 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 a specialized imager that, that has a, a, a set of a, a, a charge coupled devices with different filter windows, and we, we specify those windows to more sharply isolate uh, the the spectral bands rather than using the, the bands that, that simulate how, your, how the rods in your eye work. And so just to, to summarize, then we can get, uh, get comparisons of what the materials look like at different points in the page. Is the flourishing, does that seem to be the same pigment as say the rubric was on the page? We've, uh, since the, that example, um, we've improved our equipment. We use eight bands now. 
And uh, they, the people actually doing this aren't here because they are on a tour of the UK. Uh, they've been in Oxford and Cambridge this week and then they're going back to Wales and they're uh, imaging a number of, of manuscripts uh, for support of this project. And the next step in that is they're going to be doing things like uh, doing massive uh, studies of multiple pages to analyze the changes in, in pigment spectra and the, 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 the variations of pigment spectra on, on various pages. And also we're developing a tool for scholars to use so they can go in and probe and look at, am I seeing really a difference in color? Are, this, are these really different? And a way of exporting their uh, observations. So that's just a couple of works in progress and the people actually doing the work, uh, Rogero Pintas and Yang Yang, as I said, they should be here presenting it, but they're, they're traveling. And uh, with the support of, from the larger project from uh, YDC2, Meg Ballinger, Lewis King, Michael App Appleby, and then uh, uh, Jessica Brantley and uh, Barbara Shaler, uh, the scholars actually interested in the manuscripts that we're, we're trying to uh, analyze. And this is all a Mellon-funded project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Holly.